everyone. Thank you so much uh, for letting me be here and speak to you about what is my most research pe uh, recent piece of research. Um, as Herb said, I am Sarah Wiseman, and I'm a lecturer at Goldsmiths University. And I want to talk to you about why does pizza mean I love you? Now, in 2017, the Oxford English Dictionary chose their word of the year to be youthquake. This is the word that describes the recent zeal that millennials have had with regards to politics. And they, just, they thought that this youthquake was responsible for the most recent general election upheaval. This has since been questioned. Um, it's not necessarily certain that this youthquake actually happened. It seems that maybe Corbyn's youthquake did not bring all the boys to the yard. <laughs> Pause for laughter. However, um, <laughs> The Oxford English Dictionary may have messed up here. However, their previous words of the year have been very descriptive. They've given us selfie, they've given us a vape, and they've given us the ever-increasingly useful omni-shambles and post-truth. Now, does anyone know what the word of the year was for 2015, or can anyone mime it? No. OK. The word of the year for 2015 uh, was laughing face with tears. Oxford English Dictionaries announced this like an elderly person learning to text for the first time. They were so proud to have their first pictograph uh, word of the year. Now, this, they chose this word because of the astonishing level uh, of use of the word emoji and emojis themselves. There'd just been an astronomical rise in them in 2015. And with the company SwiftKey, they analysed the number of emojis used, and they found out that in 20% of all emoji communication, we're using the laughing face with tears, which is pretty incredible. It's since declined from the year 2017, I will note. Just choose what you will about what might have caused that decline in happiness, but we are not using it quite as much anymore. However, emojis are still very important to us. Now, at the beginning of the emoji's life, it wasn't really very well respected. Um, emoji was seen as unfunny, uncreative, immature. People were writing about how kind of um, it was it's quite an immature thing for an adult to get involved in. However, since then, we've realized that actually emoji are incredibly important to us. With my friends from Cambridge Analytica, uh, I can tell you that in... <laughs> In 60, <laughs> on Facebook, there are 60 million emojis used every single day. But that's nothing, that's minuscule in comparison to how many are used on Messenger. There are 5 billion emojis used every single day on Facebook Messenger. And our fascination with emoji is being used to sell us products. You are twice as likely to click on an email, uh, a marketing email, if it has an emoji in the subject line. And uh, this is really just proving that emoji is so important to us. In the year 2016, it was estimated that 2.3 trillion emoji were used in messaging uh, apps in the year 2016. Emoji are important to us. They are an incredibly integral part of the way that we write and communicate to each other using digital platforms, which makes someone who thought that uh, emoji are immature and unfunny look a bit like a linguistically conservative, humorless, and miserable curmudgeon. <laughs> now, why am I actually talking to you about emoji? Well, as Herb said, I am a lecturer in computer science. Uh, and I'm specifically researching the area of human-computer interaction. This is also referred to as user experience or user interface design. And the specific area that I'm interested in at the moment is the way that we use emoji. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, the beautiful and wonderful way that we use it. Now, in previous uh, incarnations, HCI research to me has meant um, looking at the way that we design medical devices to ensure that people are safe from harm in the hospital and to ensure that nurses and doctors can do their jobs properly. It's also meant designing interactive theatre experiences so that we can create out-of-body experiences for people at the theatre. It's also meant designing uh, evaluation devices that help us run uh, focus groups with people who are visually impaired or blind. And more recently, what HCI research has meant for me, and my parents are terribly proud of this, is emoji. This is the best version I can find of myself um, in emoji. Now, what I want to talk to you about is why I actually got interested in this. And to, to get you to understand, I'm going to tell you a little story. So, last year, um, my friend sent me a wonderful text. And this is what this text was about. My friend has been trying to save up for a house for years and years and years. And she's been trying so very hard. She's been saving for a long, long time. In order to save up this money, she's taken lots of steps. She's moved back in with her parents. They will not thank me for representing them like that. 
don't tell them. Uh, she's moved back in with her parents, and she has even given up eating avocado on toast. After she took all of these steps, last August, I received a text message from her. The text message read as such, it's finally happened. We exchanged on the house. I was thrilled. I was overjoyed for my friend. This is fantastic. This is everything she's been working towards. This is her dream. I replied immediately, and I replied instinctively, and this was the text I sent her back. <laughs> now, she quite quickly sent me back this. Um, what? Now, to everyone else in the room apart from me, it's very clear what I've done wrong here. Um, but uh, I didn't realize. Now, carp streamers, which is the name of this emoji, carp streamers is something that me and my sister have been sending each other for years. And this means, well done, fantastic, incredible. Uh, and I didn't really realize that this emoji wasn't as universal as I had initially thought. Um, and that explained my friend's significantly underwhelming reaction to my overwhelmingly positive reaction. Well, that's what I thought anyway. And this got me thinking, how do we reuse and repurpose emoji? Is it just me? Is it just me and my sister that do this? I mean, my mum has told us we're very special and unique, but I don't know if it's only us that do this kind of repurposing behaviour. And this set me off on a journey, a journey into understanding how emoji are being used. Now, uh, the thing I wanted to know is, A, do we repurpose emojis? And B, if we are repurposing emoji to mean different things, are we doing it personally? Are we doing it in micro-communities with just another person? So let's answer that first question, shall we? Do people repurpose emoji? <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, yes. Uh, people repurpose emoji, yes. Uh, people use emoji for things that are not their intended use. Now, what do I mean by intended use here? Now, the intended use of emoji are defined by the Unicode Consortium, who meet once a year to decide which emoji we can have. They've recently given us dinosaurs for the first time. Hurrah. Um, now, for every single emoji they decide that we need, they give us... I, I've just realised how many photos there are going to be of me with an aubergine behind me. <laughs> I've just realised. OK, sorry. <laughs> For every uh, emoji that they decide we need, they give us a, a word description of it, okay? And that we can, just, we can see as the kind of intended use. But you and I, we don't see this word description. What we see is how the emoji is drawn, which creates this disconnect between what the emoji is intended for and what it's often used for. For example, this emoji is actually called woman tipping hand. Um, and in early incarnations, it really looked a lot like the woman was sassily flicking her hair. So even though the... Unicode definition is woman tipping hand. For us, the definition is woman, tipping, uh, woman flicking hair, really. And it's this ambiguity that comes from translating the words into pictures that led Apple in 2016 to ruin sexting. Now, does anyone know what the uh, image, what the word is for the Unicode character UR1F351? Is it peach? It is peach. Now, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, how Apple chose to represent peach. Um, and in 2000, uh, th 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 there's no reason, right, why the peach needs to look like this. Okay, the peach could look like any, any type of fruit. The peach could look like that, for example. And that's exactly what Apple tried to do in 2015. They switched from this to the new version. And this was met with absolute uproar from people. And the reason being that actually people were using this not to mean peach necessarily, but it's a bum, right? It looks, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Um, people did a mo uh, some research on this, uh, and they found out the, that 4% uh, of the time the peach was being used to mean peachy keen, or that's peachy, positive. Only 7% of the time was it used to mean the fruit. 73% of time it was being used to mean buttocks. Now, Apple changed the emoji to look like this, um, and as I said, people were furious. Very, very quickly, Apple changed it back, and that's why on your phone you can still use that um, rather suggestive version of the peach. And this shows that Apple were respecting and acknowledging the fact that we repurpose emoji, and they wanted to be able to give people that ability to sext in any way they wanted to. Now, this is not a revelation. I'm pretty sure that many of you in this room understand that peach can often mean that. Um, and it's becoming such a pervasive type of uh, repurposing that brands are even getting in on the act of how emoji are repurposed. For example, Durex recently released this. Not a real product, um, but 
an acknowledgement that often this uh, emoji can be used um, with, uh, with regards to sex. Now, this is just an example of a very pervasive universal emoji repurposing. What about situations where people want to repurpose and reuse emoji in order to hide what they intended, in order to speak secretly or covertly with others? Now, this is a thing that is actually happening. Now, what group of people should we be worried about using covertly uh, hidden codes uh, in emoji? Is it uh, criminals? Is it dodgy politicians? Is it terrorists? Now, the big worry in America at the moment is that teenagers are using emoji to communicate secret messages that their parents can't understand. And I want to show you now a news report from Fox News describing the issue. And cyber experts say kids are starting to use some as a secret code that we as parents can't necessarily figure out. Often it's a combination of emojis, like a face with a zipper along with, uh, should be parents next to that zipper. That would tell you, that would mean don't tell your parents about something. Now another one is a fox. You think that's a simple enough thing, a fox, right? But that can be a message to someone that you want to sneak out, sneak out of the house. A skull, arrow, and a flame. That can be saying to someone, I hope you die in a fire. Now <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm the expert here, so I'm going to try and tell you just how this translates to hope you die in a fire. Okay, so skull sometimes means... <sighs> No, there's no way. This is too complex for you to be able to, for you to, be able to understand. But we're starting to drill down into how we emoji are repurposed. A, they're, they're repurposed on a more universal level, level. We all understand kind of peach and aubergine. But then they're starting to be repurposed by small groups of people to purposefully hide meaning from other groups of people. But you know what? We still haven't got to carp streamers. We still haven't got to people using it on a one-to-one -one level. And this is where my research came in, because no one had really studied this before. So I decided to set out a survey in order to work out exactly, is it just me and Amy, my sister? <laughs> you don't know who she is. Uh, or is it other people as well? So I, I set out a survey and asked people about the way they secretly use emoji with just another person. And this is research I'm going to be presenting next month, but you guys are getting the first look at it, okay? Uh, now, the, um, the main finding is no, my sister and I are not strange. There are loads of other people that do this type of thing. And if I see you in the break and you do it, please come and tell me about it. Um, now, what are, the, what are the results that I found? Well, firstly, I found that the most commonly repurposed emoji that people use with just one other person are smileys, animals, and food. No one repurposed flags, for example. They're just too boring. Um, and people mainly repurposed, uh, mainly had these secret single emojis with their partner, more so than they did with their friends and their family. Now, what were people actually using these repurposed emoji for? Oh, sorry. Firstly, I should tell you that the most commonly repurposed emoji was the octopus. Loads of people reported using that for other meanings. Some people used it to mean hugs and cuddles, which is lovely. Some people used it to mean other things that you would find in the dark places in the internet. Uh, less lovely. Um, what was the most commonly used pet name? Penguin. Loads of people reported that they called their, other, their spouse Penguin, but not in real life. They wouldn't be walking into the kitchen and say, hey, Penguin. This was just something they would use via text. And this emoji specifically referred to their, uh, to their partner or to their significant other. Now, why were people reusing emoji? Well, lots of people repurposed emoji to mean excitement. Um, I put carp streamers in there. It isn't actually in the data set because my sister refused to fill in the survey. Um, but I know that that's in there. But other people reported using a unicorn or this gaming symbol to mean excitement and happiness. Obviously, some people repurposed emoji for sex. Why did people use emojis for sex? Well, they needed it because sometimes if you're trying to kind of let your loved one know that you're in the mood, you don't necessarily want to let everyone else that's on the bus behind your loved one know that you're in the mood. So you might need a secret code. The top one is fairly self-explanatory, uh, feeling horny. This bottom one was reported um, because it was specifically purposefully chosen to be the least sexy emoji in the set. Um, and ironically, the people wanted to use it. Um, People also repurposed and reused emoji, again, for hiding information. Some people wanted to use emoji so they could 
hide illicit activity that they were doing. This one was reported for drug use, a postal horn blow, you can do what you want with that one. Um, people also repurposed emoji because of the way that they looked. Now, this one's fascinating. Someone talked about the fact they needed to talk about a coffin, but there was no coffin in the emoji set. And so the bathtub was used because it was a person lying down, similar to a coffin. The bottom one here, this was used to mean uh, lesbian because in uh, American Sign Language, that is lesbian. Um, people also often repurposed emoji because they had a shared history. This emoji meant, remember that time we, or do you know that, remember when we talked about, and it's just a shorthand to mean, remember that feeling that we had, remember that shared experience. People use emoji uh, to, for speed. Uh, sometimes they put two emojis together to uh, say a word. Do you get that? If you say those two things out loud, you get hatchet. Uh, which was their local pub. <laughs> Some people wanted to use emoji to say, I love you. British people are not renowned for being open with their feelings, and sometimes it's quite embarrassing to tell someone you, you mean I love you. And so people were using purposefully comic emoji, uh, for example, the horse, uh, and often food. Some people reported using pizza, and another set of people reported using cheese, because that was a shared food that they both loved. And so when it's hard to say I love you to someone, you can just say, I love you, using food. My favourite thing was that emoji, some emoji were repurposed just for connection. Sometimes words aren't enough. And these are my favourite ones. Um, people explained that sending the bear says a lot without having to find the words. And also that talking is hard. And so emoji can let you communicate with people. Just as every day when we're talking to each other, we don't just use words. We use body language, we use tone, we use touch. In digital communications, we use emoji to add that similar sort of texture to say things without words. Now, I'll just finish up by saying this. Why does this matter? Well, I think it matters because we are constantly trying to teach computers how to understand our use of emoji, to do sentiment analysis, for example. I think that's incredibly dangerous. Humans don't yet understand how we use emoji. Just You saw that ridiculous news report. And there are so many personal and unique little things that are happening between humans. So if we try and teach computers how to do that, I just don't think they have a chance. And I think there's something quite dangerous about automatically assuming that we can definitely do that. Um, so that's why I think understanding the way that humans use emoji is not only fascinating and lovely to find out about, but it's also important when we're considering how we're going to teach AI. So thank you very much uh, for listening. And yes, I did match my last slide to my shirt. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as a 50-year-old man, I found that very illuminating and, and feeling very confused, actually, as well. Uh, is, um, is there any place online where people gather and agree what a, a, an emoji means? Is there like on Reddit or something like that, or does it just no, it's, it's, emerge? It, yeah, no, it's, it's a more natural evolution. It's not uh, like the, the French language where people decide. It's more like the English language where, where words just happen to come about and happen to it happens to evolve. It's definitely not a decision. Okay. There is, however, a place online where you can find out where these, where these right. things have happened. So if you go to Emojipedia, they will often tell you the intended use and then the common the use actual, as well. Yes. The urban dictionary of emoji, if you yes, will. Yes, right. exactly, yeah. exactly that, yes. And so is there any body that decides what emojis will appear on the next version of iOS or, you know, um, uh, the Google, uh, Android? Or, yes. Or, is, or is that just a commercially driven thing and then they have their own people? No, it's specifically not commercially driven. So right. it's the Unicode Consortium who in previous years haven't had much to do. They've just been saying, yes, that character still exists in, the, in these languages. But now they're having to decide what characters are we going to represent okay. in emoji. And so the way that it works is every year they meet up. But people, you know, anyone in this room could suggest a new emoji. But you have to prove that um, lots of people would use it, that it's yeah. necessary. Um, but that's why we've recently, we've recently got woman with headscarf, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, breastfeed woman there's been lots of people saying there's no representation for us yeah. um, and so they've petitioned the Unicode consortium who have then said yeah that's an important emoji we want to represent that and have put it into the language it raises a question though every year we're going to be getting 60 new emoji mm. how are we going to represent that how are we going to start to use them it's, mm. it's quite an interesting design problem that's, that's coming towards us soon yes fascinating yeah. Sarah thank you so much thank you very much cheers thank I'll you. take that click yeah. oh you need it. Okay, cheers. <laughs>